But no, I just never even liked being at the funeral. I didn't know how to console my mom. Yeah. Uh, I was so young. And they were like, go, go hug your mom. And I didn't know what it meant to her. You know? Yeah. For her. And your mom, your, it sounds like your mom has, has sacrificed a lot for you. And um, it seems like you, sh you struggled a lot in your childhood. You know, how do you feel like that has shaped you to the person you are today? You seem to be a really great person. Uh, but how do you feel like that has shaped you? I think it put me in the search of love, uh, to be honest. My mom didn't show love. She didn't have time to. So there was never I love you. There was no hugs, good night. It was we're surviving. And that was her way of showing love. And that's all she could. That's all she had to give. She was at her, you know, the last drop that she had to give us. So for me, I just would watch movies and try to find some way to like build my own mindset of what love is. Take every relationship I dated. And because I really didn't know what love was. Uh, my first time my mom told me she loved me, I was actually getting sent overseas with the military. And I was yeah. like, what? So I'm on this airplane and I'm thinking the whole time, like, damn, my mom just said she loves me. Very strange. Wow. Um, but hey, guys, welcome to Little Black Book 91. You know, it's that time again. It's your favorite dating and relationship coach breaking down another one of these videos. Is Tyler a victim or is he one of those villains of The Lovers Blind Season 7? Now, I think partly he is a victim for the kids situation that he brought up very, very late in the show to Ashley. But I do want to talk about a little bit something else. Attachment styles. I talk about this all the time in regards to different um, contestants on different TV shows and Tyler is no different. He is of, I believe, the avoidant attachment style and I'm going to play some clips for you to be able to see that. I think whenever we're talking about people on these reality TV shows, we must understand that people, their childhood actually impacts the way they're going to have adult relationships. Now we see he's had some situations with some children. Um, which again, if you link it back to the pod situation, you know, you actually mentioned about how, you know, the family aspect, he always wanted a big family. Well, he's got one. <laughs> he's never told her. But going back to attachment styles, um, we're seeing how Tyler interacts or how he shows up. You know, he spoke about how his mother never said, I love you until he was heading off to military. What does that do to a young child? I can tell you. Well, that will put a child in a particular place of survival mode where their emotional needs are more than likely not being met. If the mother is not saying, I love you, more than likely she's also not catering for the emotional needs. You heard him say also as well that they were a lot of times in survival mode, which is totally understandable because many of us as black people <laughs> who live on a bread line financially especially those who are coming from um you know africa or caribbean coming to another continent they are suffering from the effects of trying to assimilate into a world which is racist and into a world where they're financially probably going to be behind um in order to try and make it in this world right and what can end up happening is that parents can end up neglecting the emotional needs of that child they'll tell you go to school get an education um you got food in your in your tummy you got clothes on your back and you got a roof over your head what more can you ask for and what they don't realize is by them not showing the emotional capacity to uh, uh you know to cater for your emotional needs they actually stunt the emotional growth of the individual and the child and what it can do is it sends a child oftentimes into an avoidant spell what that means is that the child will end up being in a place where they tend to try to separate themselves from very tight-knit, close emotional connections. And there is th uh, four actually attachment styles that was mentioned by John Bowlby, the British psychologist, and Mary Ainsworth. We're going to deal specifically with the avoidant attachment today. And today we're going to talk about is how I believe that Tyler is of the avoidant attachment and how this also is going to affect Ashley marrying him later on down the line. Because one thing that people don't tell you is that a lot of times when it comes to avoidance is they are very good at the very beginning. Oh, they are amazing at the very beginning. It is when commitment comes through the door that you start to see a different style of individual person. Or better yet, when you first give them the rejection or the first taste of abandonment, perceiving from their position, might you actually see a different style of behavior from them if they're not aware of how they show up in relationships. We're going to break it down in the rest of this video. So make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, click on that bell button for the notification of the uploads. We appreciate you guys. Stay locked, stay loaded. Don't forget, we're still doing some emergency coaching. I've only got a few spaces left. Um, you can click on the link down below if you're also somebody who's suffering with the attachment style. Maybe it's avoidant. Maybe you're anxious. Uh, maybe you're new to attachment styles, but you wanted to be, get some coaching on that. I've got a few spots left before 2025. You can uh, join up, but it's a set payment okay so uh, uh we would love to see you guys and hopefully be able to help many of you guys going forward all right cool so let's get into this video because i do believe there's a lot to unpack here for us to really understand 
as I said to you earlier on, uh, attachment styles is simply the way that we attach or simply the way that we connect emotionally in relationships. And avoidant attachments tend to uh, uh, avoid close-knit connections in relationships because of a great uh, core wound or fear of either being rejected, which is dismissive avoidant, or being abandoned, betrayed, and rejected, which is fearful avoidant, the FA and the DA. I do believe that Tyler probably is carrying more of the dismissive avoidant, but it's not important to de decipher as much as of yet whether it's DA or FA he's an avoidant I believe and when you have an avoidant individual um, attachment what you'll find is that the way that they connect in relationships can be very harmful at times to other people if they're not fully understood and if they're not given proper room to be able to um, show up in the way that is going to be beneficial for both themselves and the other party. It takes somebody who's really self-aware to pay attention to know what's actually happening to them in a relationship. So let's break this down a little bit more. Let's listen to what you've got to say. But I was 19 years old, so it took some time, um, but it helped me build who I am today, just wanting love and loving love so much. Uh, and that was my big thing when I was going through the interview process with Love is Blind. I was letting them know, like, I just love love. Even if it hurts me, I have tattoos about love. It's just, if you're not living for love, you know, what are you doing? Damn. Now, I love the fact he says at 19, you know, he loved, at 19 is when his mom finally told him that she actually loved him as he was heading off to um, the army. That's probably a reason why he was heading off to the army. <laughs> uh, probably because he didn't feel a connection emotionally to his mother. Now, he says he has a very good connection, very good relationship with his mother. I don't disbelieve him. Probably does. Uh, but he may not realize that the emotional connection is also very much needed as a young child. As you're older, it's fine. But when you're much younger, you needed that connection. And so you actually develop a set of traits and behaviors that tend to permeate through your relationships as you get older. Right. And then your adult and, 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 and you're going to hear him say that he never had problems getting women. So what was the issue? It was a connectivity issue. But we're going to break that down as well. Let's let him speak that out for you guys a little bit more as well. OK. I love your the I love the fuck out of you is is a great yeah, one as well. yeah that's great I forgot about that I love the fuck I love the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so passionate just passion yeah, yeah, I love it uh, you're a really handsome guy if you don't mind me saying and I'm curious in 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 the bubble I'm curious about your strategy were you thinking like at some point did you were you trying to describe yourself like especially with Ashley once you like someone you know every time we like someone even a regular dating setting we're we're kind of compelled to showcase our stuff talk you know like we're trying to sell ourselves because we like someone you know so like what was your strategy going in and once you started making a connection with ashley how did you you know you couldn't go by your looks and things like that and you know i, I don't i don't know you in real life but like you know you are a handsome guy and like how mm -hmm. how did you go about trying to avoid you know conversations about looks or did you tap into it all it seems like you were more open to it than ashley was a little bit so like what was your approach on that i tried to stay away from looks um only because and this is not to brag but i've never had issues dating women you know i've got the compliments um, but I've also got the hits where it's like, oh, he's light skinned. He's a piece of shit. He's, you know, the whole concept of he's a light skinned man. So I didn't want to put. Well, let's pause it right there. First and foremost, if he has no problems getting women, what was the point of him coming on the show? Well, the reality is probably because he could not keep them. Or if he was keeping them, he wasn't keeping them in, go in very good health. And so he was looking for something different. Maybe I need to choose. Maybe he's thinking my choices in women are a problem. What he doesn't realize is it's usually the fact that your filter system is incorrectly um, put together due to your experiences. If you go much earlier in the video, which I'll go back a little bit for you guys, you would have heard him say that, you know, uh, in, in relationships, the way um, that he was doing it, he had to figure out what love was. Well, if you have to figure that out, the problem is that you're going to pick up a lot of different ideas on what love is. The fantastical idea, which is why he loves love, because he's picked up a lot of fantastical ideas, which the world will teach you about what love actually is. But when it comes down to the crux of it, it comes very difficult because love really is a painful thing. In fact, love is sacrifice. Love is death. Um, love is uh, it's protection. It's, prote it's provision. It is, it is priest priestlyhood, right? It is kingship, but it's also responsibility as well as also being a part of leadership, right? And so there's a whole bunch of words we can attach to love and different concepts. But the reality of the situation is when you haven't seen that in your adult, when you haven't seen that in your childhood, it does become very difficult then to replicate outside of what you have witnessed and experienced in a healthy manner in a relationship because you haven't witnessed it. So you have to, because so, you haven't experienced it. So you have to kind of then base your ideas on what you've seen from other relationships or other experiences that you've put into when you got older, and then you then kind of kind of take that and put it into a relationship. The trouble with that is that the programming that you had as a child is so strong. 
The Bible says faith cometh by hearing, by hearing the word of God. The way that you walk, the Bible says you walk by faith, not by sight. The way that you walk, it is based upon what you've heard. What you heard really means what you've seen, what you've heard, what you've understood. And so in life, when you are placed with these experiences of how to deal with love, due to the social um, engineering that he's had and the survival mechanisms he's probably had to put in place in order to survive life with a mother who couldn't tell him that she loved him from young, how he couldn't console his mother when his, he couldn't console his mother and did not know how to when his, when his mother's mother passed away and was not sure how to deal with it okay knowing that his mom was on the run basically on the run or almost having to leave her own family in order to look after him was there resentment from the mother was there any anger to, from the mother towards him we don't know yet and probably it plays a role in the way that she actually governed and she um stewarded her three children right and so what you'll realize is a lot of those traits will actually be seeped into the way he behaves so yeah he had no problem getting them because he's a good looking man he's very attractive on the outer shell but keeping someone requires maintenance but it also requires you to be able to have a good balance of being able to give and to take and one thing about dismissive avoidance specifically avoidance i should say is that it's an unbalanced equation when it comes to giving and taking why because they fear that when they give too much they'll be too vulnerable but they also take too much sometimes not realizing that they are uh, um, asking so much of you and and pulling out so much of you right so again talking about dismissive avoidance they're literally people who fear being rejected and will look to avoid to, to avoid and dismiss how they feel towards intimacy and emotions OK, they struggle to say their needs and, and they look to keep autonomy in relationships because they fear being enmeshed, meaning they fear being put together to become one and them losing themselves and their identity. OK, and losing their independence. And so they keep folks at arm's length. OK, now, uh, again, avoidance tend to do this because, again, like I said, they don't want to lose themselves and their identity and because of their fear of being rejected or abandoned. So how does this affect a relationship? How does Ashley come into this? Well, the reality of the situation is why would somebody want to date somebody who's dismissive? Well, the reality of the situation is there's two things that usually happen. Number one is that the dismissive avoidant person or even just to say avoidant person in general presents this beautiful, eloquent um, imagery at the beginning. I'm going to talk from two perspectives. Fearful avoidant, dismissive avoidant. If you're aware of these attachment styles, fantastic. If you're not, kind of get with it. <laughs> so the fearful avoidant, I believe, starts off from a beautiful headspace. The fearful avoidant will start with the, I need to put on a performance. They're not, they're not saying this to themselves. This is how they, this is what's going on. I need to put on a performance. I need to put on a mask. I need to perform. I need to be of service, of use. I need to show my best foot forward by being perfect. OK, and what ends up happening is the fearful avoidance starts off in a headspace. So it's very calculated on the fearful avoidance part. They're not trying to manipulate you per se. They just don't want to be rejected and they don't want to be abandoned. And so they're putting on their best performance. OK, then we have the dismissive avoidant person. Right. Both again are avoidance, but come from different spectrums. The dismissive avoidant will start off with a heart space. This is where he is. As you heard him say, I've got so much love to give. Da -da 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 -da. They start from a heart space where they're very open, they are willing, they are willing participants, they are wanting to do, they are energized, they're all encompassing. And you can see energy from the beginning, right? Very much energy from the beginning. And something's going to happen. Usually it is commitment or a fear um, starts to arise because they're starting to have to commit or they feel like they're going to be trapped in a relationship. And what ends up happening is a role reversal or I can say a switch. The FA, fearful avoidant, goes into a heart space. But because the FA, the fearful avoidant, doesn't always know how to label their emotions, they become dysregulated. The dysregulation leads to hot and cold behaviors that tend to then show up in a relationship. And you're like, where did you go? You were, you were on me, you were consistent, you were loving, you were talkative, you were everything I was looking at. And suddenly, now I'm not seeing that anymore. And the dismissive avoidant starts off with a heart space, so open, so, so wonderfully, you know, uh, uh, loving and caring, suddenly shut down. Why? What happened? Well, fear or uh, fear of being hurt or a commitment, you know, fear of having to commit and then being locked in, right? They start realizing, they start operating from a headspace. Now they start floor finding. Okay, you got this floor, this floor, this floor. And suddenly they go, okay, I'm using that to back away. Right? And they start distancing themselves. They start stonewalling. They start gaslighting. Well, not always gaslighting, but I say, but, you know, stonewalling. They start emotionally distancing themselves. You know, they, they, they shut down. They, you know, they become conflict avoidant. Suddenly it's all a problem. Right? Because now they're operating from a 
head space, not a what? Heart space. Why? Because it's fearful, it's very scary, sorry, to operate from a heart space now because if I leave my heart on the line, I could get hurt. But if I operate from a headspace, I'm calculated. I know how to move. The, a, the DA and the FA switch positions. But because both of them don't practice those positions, because you need a good balance of being in your head, as well, using the logic or using the mind, as well as also the heart, you need a balance. But neither party is balanced. That's why we call them insecure attachments. And so when they get into a relationship like Tyler is, he'll tell you at first he loves you and da 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 It's all mm, 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 mm. Who is this man? And you might get that man for about six to, six, six to eight months, maybe, or maybe a year or so. Honeymoon, let's call it honeymoon phase. Two years max. When suddenly, it all goes, whoom. It goes dark. This man, it was so perfectly, so handsome, so nice, so loving, so caring. He suddenly is not aware, and I call it the kill switch. There's a kill switch that switches on. And suddenly, fear. And the fear overtakes actually now all the actions and he's living up here and so because and it's all because as a child the child was neglected emotionally so now if the dismissive of one hasn't done the work what they will realize is they struggle to say their wants and needs they move passively aggressively they're highly susceptible to criticism okay they struggle in the areas of they become heavily uh, they can be, they can become heavily guarded Right, where they, were, where they were once very open, okay, heavily self-reliant, okay, um, you know, they got a survival mentality, okay, it's a me versus you, and then they start externalizing their value based on their body, their appearance, their money, their job, their car. And when they start feeling like they're being enmeshed, when they feel like somebody, they're losing their, their individuality and their, 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 their identity, Woo, baby, the fight back is crazy, okay? They will start emotionally distancing. How does this play a part in Ashley and, and, Ashley and his relationship? We know that, uh, well, it looks like, I got on Ashley's um, page, I just went on her page not long ago, they looks like they're still together, okay? All right, and for now, that's her mate, okay? And it seems good right now. I'm not saying it's going to fail. I'm saying if there is not work being done, his true identity, which is still wounded, will come to the foreground if work has not been done. Because the pain that he's felt in childhood, the wound hasn't closed until we begin to heal. Time isn't going to heal those wounds. Us actively sowing the, the, the hole in our heart is where we get to start seeing change and healing. Right? So that's very important. And like I said, you know, um, he, he didn't, he, like I said, he, he didn't know what love was because he was never taught it, right? As we hear, someone to be there. Oh, I see this love is taking over. And we didn't have much love. Like, I remember, like, I wouldn't even tell my mom, like, I love you, like, nothing. Yeah. See, so I, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm telling you this from a person who's also a recovering DA and is becoming more secure. It, the, the, the hardest thing is also being vulnerable. And it's not at the beginning. Usually it's not at the beginning. It is, at, it is six months in, 12 months in. Okay, where, where you get hurt by something or let's say Ashley does something and it could be inconspicuous. She cuts him a few times or she says something a bit too sharp or she says something too loud or just says something that's going to hurt his feelings. If he's not well versed and practiced, what you're going to find is that's going to come out later on. He's going to start emotionally distancing and she'll just wonder what's happening. Why is he suddenly just distancing himself all the time? Right. And, it's, and, and, and again, until you call him out and say, listen, I don't want the relationship to go that way. You know, I care about you, I love you, and I want this to work, but I see you're distancing yourself. What's the issue? A lot of dismissive avoidance don't believe that people actually care about them because a lot of times their parents didn't care about them emotionally. So they don't feel that people care about their emotional well-being. And so they feel weak and they feel vulnerable showing emotion because they weren't meant to show emotion when they were younger. So it feels like they're being manipulated and attacked by their own emotions. And whatever you reject, you repel. And so they actually... And actually, so in actual fact, what's happening is they are abandoning and rejecting themselves and whatever you reject becomes ugly. And so what ends up happening is they repel it. And as they repel it, if you're not authentically accepting you, the other party too will also reject you. How can I not when you've rejected it first and you're telling me and you're showing me through actions, I should also reject that. Your inability to be open and being vulnerable with your own emotions is going to cause me to also want to be not, well, not accepting of your emotions. You're not accepting of it. 
It takes a very strong person, a very caring, empathetic person who can really bypass that. But by then, you might be hurt too many times by the dismissive avoidance behavior and pulling away for you actually to, to actually be able to do that in a relationship for long. So it's just something to look out for that I noticed about, um, about Tyler. And I'll do a second video on Ashley and why she wanted to stay with him because there's a reason, right? She told us her story. So we can go back and, and, and look into that. But make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, click on that bell button for notification uploads. We appreciate it. Don't forget, we are still doing a bit of coaching. I've only got a few slots. I'm not doing many before 2025. I've closed off my practice right now um, and the coaching that I've been doing. Um, and so if you want still coaching, I do have emergency slots, the uh, queue jump. I have a few slots on a Monday and a Thursday. Sign up for it. If it is something you want to heal from your attachment styles, this is what we're going to do. Some great work. I appreciate you guys. Say lots of love. We'll see you again very, very soon. Much love.